Prepare yourself to start an extraordinary voyage through naval history as we unveil the inspiring tale of the USS Long Beach. It's not just a ship on the sea, but it's a marvel that has marked many firsts in naval history. Join us as we delve into the extraordinary weaponry that made the USS Long Beach a true maritime marvel. Why USS Long Beach? Because it's one of a kind. It's a marvelous ship that ruled the waves before its decommissioning. The USS Long Beach was the trendsetter for the nuclear-powered guided missile cruiser in the United States Navy. It's also the world's first nuclear-powered surface combat ship. You must have heard the name of the city, Long Beach, in California. Well, the ship is the third one to be named after a city. She is also the last model to be built in the form of a cruiser design. Now, let us know her history. Long Beach was first designated as CLGN-160. She was reclassified as CGN-160 in early 1957, but was classed again as CGN-9 on July 1, 1957. USS Long Beach was sponsored by Mrs. Marion Swanson Hosmer and launched on the 14th of July, 1959. Can you guess the price tag the ship had? You can count to millions. It cost up to $320 million, which would make it a jaw-dropping $3.13 billion today. But it was over budget then as well. Their budget was $250 million. Now, that's what we call a priceless piece of history. Not regarding the huge amount of money it was invested in. What did the USS Long Beach have that made it so legendary? Well, let's start with its structure. The Long Beach was supposed to be a small frigate, which is a type of warship, but it was redesigned to be what it is in the present. It was a beast in size, with its 721 feet in length and weighing a whopping 1,700 tons. It was like a heavyweight champion of the high seas. In addition to the steel that was used to make her, she also contained 450 tons of aluminum, which resulted in the voice radio call sign Alcoa. It also had a box-like structure that harbored the ScanFAR system, consisting of the AN-SPS-32 and AN-SPS-33 phased array radars. USS Long Beach was the sole member of the Long Beach class because she was used to test these. What did it give to the ship? It gave the ship the ability to have unbeatable air surveillance and target tracking skills. It stood out in the crowd like a superhero at a costume party. Two C-1W pressurized water reactors ensured that the USS Long Beach could travel long distances without stopping at any port for fuel. This reactor's hot pressurized water drove two General Electric turbines, allowing this ship to travel at a speed of more than 30 knots. It's a dream to travel without constantly worrying about fuel shortage. To withstand the harshest seas, they used HY-80 steel, a special alloy created by the US Navy. Now, as it's called a missile cruiser in the United States Navy, let's get to know about the missiles in the ship. The USS Long Beach was armed to the teeth. The ship detected airborne threats with its Terrier surface-to-air missile system. It could hit a target up to 40 miles away. It had a terrorific setup its sleeve. It also poses as an underwater protector as it has torpedo tubes for launching anti-submarine torpedoes. RUR-5 ASROC anti-submarine system with a 10,000-yard range for torpedoes or depth charges. The USS Long Beach had two special missiles at the front called MK-10. These launchers were used to shoot Terrier missiles, which could move really far, more than 30 miles away. It was used to take down threats. It's like having a super long-range arrow to protect a ship. And if that wasn't enough, it had an artillery backup. It also consists of two triple 12.75-inch torpedo launchers. It could fire the Mark 46 torpedo. As well as the torpedoes, it also has guns, which add an additional weaponry. Two 538 caliber guns are capable of surface and shore fire to a range of 18,000 yards. The USS Long Beach had a big gun at the back, called the MK-12 launcher. This launcher was like a super gun for Talos long-range missiles. These rockets could reach really far, more than 80 nautical miles away. It was like having a superhero sniper watching the ship from way out in the distance. By the time it was decommissioned, it underwent a lot of changes. The USS Long Beach had two launchers for shooting long-range missiles. These replaced the old Terrier ones. The Talos missile, the ship had launchers for it. These were taken out and replaced by two sets of four mounts for the RGM-84 Harpoon anti-ship missiles instead. They also upgraded by adding two Phalanx CIWS, which are like rapid-fire guns, on the back part of the ship. They also put four launchers for BGM-109 Tomahawk cruise missiles. They changed the position of Harpoon missiles to the back of the ship. 
just when you think it couldn't get better, it proves us wrong. With all these technologies, it also had some more for us. It had various supporting tools and technologies such as electronic warfare systems, communication systems, and fire control systems. These systems made sure that the ship's weapons worked together and made sure that they could accurately hit their intended targets. The ship also needed teamwork. This ship didn't just sail, it was the captain of unforgettable adventures. The USS Long Beach had shown its capabilities and long-standing perseverance in its service life. In the 1960s, it crossed 30,565 miles in Operation Sea Orbit at an average speed of 25 knots without being refueled. It was alongside the USS Enterprise and USS Brainbridge. During its journey, the ship was visited by many foreign dignitaries off both coasts of Africa and in port calls at Karachi, Pakistan, Melbourne, Australia, Wellington, New Zealand, and Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Being an armed ship, it has got stories of being engaged in battle in the seas. One of its notable achievements was the successful engagement of enemy aircraft during the Vietnam War. During the war, the USS Long Beach shot down two Vietnamese MiG aircraft at ranges of more than 60 miles. It was the first time a ship had shot down an enemy aircraft and drowned from such a distance. That's like sinking three-pointers from halfway across the basketball courts. In 1980, the USS Long Beach even played the role of a real-life hero. The ship rescued 114 Vietnamese boat people. They were people that were trying to escape from Vietnam, off the coast of Vietnam. USS Long Beach also has received the Combat Action Ribbon. USS Long Beach also worked as an escort. It was for the USS Missouri BB-63 Task Force and provided aircraft carrier escort support for the Gulf War of 1991. In May 1991, the USS Long Beach was sent to help in an operation called Operation Provide Comfort. This happened after a big military operation called Operation Desert Storm had already ended and things were becoming calmer. In June 1991, the USS Long Beach helped in Operation Fiery Vigil. In this operation, the ship helped in removing the U.S. military from two places. It was from Clark Air Base, Philippines, and U.S. Naval Base, Subic Bay. It happened due to the eruption of the volcano called Mount Pinatubo. With all its achievements in history, you would think that the ship was going to live a long life. In the early 1990s, the USS Long Beach was originally planned to upgrade the ship with an Aegis combat system. This would lead to the complete rebuilding of her. But the ship fell victim to budget cuts. After all the ship had been through, she was cut down due to budget after the 1991 Gulf War and requirements of many human resources to handle as well as maintain the huge beast compared to the existing ships. The USS Long Beach, a marvelous creation, has left an indelible mark on naval history, from being the first to have nuclear power to its advanced weaponry. Its remarkable achievement will make its name live for a long time. This ship stood as a testament to human brilliance and bravery. If you've enjoyed exploring the USS Long Beach's incredible journey, don't forget to show your support by hitting that like button and subscribing to our channel for more exciting naval adventures.